Hi, this is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, this time we're going to talk about VLAN basics. So, how to configure uh, tagged interfaces and untagged interfaces and how to see, you know, what, what VLAN an interface is in, etc. Um, and so this applies to, I'm doing this on the ICX series, but it also applies to anything in the Fast Iron series, the MLXEs, uh, the CER, the CES. Um, so they're pretty much all the same, with the exception of the VDX line. Um, everything else gets configured exactly the same way. So this is a cross-platform. So um, from my console here, if I look at the default running configuration, if I just do a show run here, uh, well, the only thing non-default is that I have a host name, but otherwise um, everything is in the default VLAN, and the default VLAN is, is VLAN 1. You can change that default VLAN. Um, and so if we look at show VLAN here, we can see that all of my ports, there's only one VLAN uh, currently created. Um, there's a maximum of 64. Now that doesn't mean this hardware is only capable of 64. The hardware is capable of 4094. However, there's only enough memory allocated for 64. So if we needed to allocate more memory, um, you could use the system max command and reload the device to reallocate the cams. Um, there's a separate video on that on system max and show default values. Um, but for most enterprises, 64 VLANs on an edge switch is far more than enough. So then we see uh, VLAN 1. It's our default VLAN. Um, spanning tree is off on this currently. Um, we can see, because I'm running router code, spanning tree is disabled by default. Um, so then we can see my ports. So unit 1, module 1, port 1 to 12, port 13 to 24. So these are my uh, uh, one, um, 10 slash 100 slash 1000 ports. Uh, and then module 2, which are my 10 gig ports, so unit 1, module 2, ports 1 to 8 are the 10 gig ports. So these are all untagged by default in the default VLAN. We have no tag ports, we have no uplink ports, we have no dual mode ports, we have no Mac VLAN ports, and there is no monitoring on this VLAN currently uh, configured. Um, and so... Um, by default, everything is in this VLAN. They can switch among each other. So um, if that's what you're going for, then, then you are done. However, uh, in most cases, the default VLAN is just somewhere where we put ports that are not allocated to another VLAN, right? So normally, we're going to put our ports into a VLAN uh, for data, for voice, you know, printers, by department, however you're going to allocate your VLANs. Um, so your uplinks are generally going to be tagged. So from switch to switch, they're going to be tagged. Out to a, say, a PC is going to be untagged because that end device doesn't understand tagging. And so um, to define tagged versus untagged, it literally means in the, in, the, in the packet as it egresses a switch port, we literally insert a tag into the into the packet header to say this packet belongs to VLAN 100 or 200 or whatever the case, um, and so the device at the other end reads that tag and understands what VLAN or what uh, broadcast domain that packet belongs to. If it's untagged, then that means that we don't insert any VLAN number, so the receiving side that doesn't understand VLANs can still process the packet. If we send tag frames to a device that is untagged, it's going to throw those packets away, right? Because it doesn't understand VLAN tagging. So um, uh, one of the anomalies with VLAN 1, well, by design, actually, is that we won't let you tag the default VLAN or VLAN 1. So if you use VLAN 1 in your environment and it's something that needs to be tagged out to other devices, say Cisco devices running in a tag native VLAN, then you need to change the default VLAN in order to be able to tag VLAN 1. So for example, if I go into config T here uh, and I go into VLAN 1 and I try to tag an interface, say tag Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1, it's going to refuse to let me do that, right? Um, so if I wanted to do that, I would just change my default VLAN to, you know, something in the high number 4,000 or something you're not going to utilize otherwise. Okay, so how do we create a VLAN? 
pretty straightforward. If I want to create VLAN 10, I can just say VLAN 10. And now optionally, I can add a name in there. Um, so I could say uh, name data. So that's always a good practice, right? So I now have a VLAN called data, uh, but there's no ports in it at this point. So if I wanted to move some ports into it, let's say I wanted to untag um, Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1, and I could do a range 2, 1 slash 1 slash 12, for example. So it, the system comes back and tells me that it's added those ports, 111 to 1112 to VLAN 10. And we'll tag an uplink. So let's say we tag um, Ethernet 1 slash 2 slash 1, which is one of the 10 gig ports um, on my 10 gig module. Okay, so um, now let's create us a, uh, say a voice VLAN. So we'll say VLAN 20 name voice the name is optional right you don't have to have that and we will uh we'll untag e one slash one slash 13 to one slash one slash 24 for example now normally with voice vlans those are going to be tagged and that's something called dual mode so if you're tagged and untagged on the same interface at the same time we call that dual mode and that requires special handling so there's another video in this series um, that specifically talks about how to do dual mode VLANs, um, but I'm not going to talk about it at this point. So then we're going to tag that same uplink because let's say that's going, that's an uplink to our data center. Um, so we will tag Ethernet 1 slash 2 slash 1. So the same port that we tagged in the previous VLAN. So now if we do a show VLAN, uh, what we're going to see here, we still have our VLAN 1. Right, and so the only ports left in VLAN one now are one slash two slash two to one slash two slash eight. All of the other ports we've moved somewhere else. So as soon as you put a port in another VLAN other than the default, it automatically takes it out of that default VLAN, and vice versa. When I remove it from any other VLAN, it'll automatically go back to VLAN one. So that's not something that I need to manually do. So here's our here's our port VLAN ten, right? Uh, port 1 slash 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 1 slash 12 uh, are untagged and 1 slash 2 slash 1 is tagged. And the same thing on VLAN 20, 1 1 13 to 1 1 24 and 1 2 1 is tagged. Um, also, if we look at an interface, so show interface E 1 slash 1 slash 1, for example, it's going to tell me uh, that it's a member of layer 2 VLAN ID 10. The port is untagged and its port state is blocking. Now that's its, um, it's blocking because the port is down at this point. Uh, if we look at one of the tagged interfaces, so one slash two slash one, uh, we can see that it's a member of two layer two VLANs. The port is tagged and its port state is forwarding. Uh, so that port is actually up at this point. So it's in a forwarding state. Okay. Um, and so if I go ahead and, um, Let's say I want to remove a port, um, so no untag E1 slash 1 slash 13, for example. So I'll remove that out of VLAN 20. So now if we go back and look at, do a show VLAN, 1 slash 1 slash 13 is now back in the default, so I didn't need to do anything. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that because this is run I'm running router code, spanning tree is disabled by default, so you pr most likely want to go into each one of those VLANs and turn on per VLAN spanning tree or more likely uh, rapid spanning tree. So span 802.1w, uh, give it a priority, so spanning tree uh, root bridge priority, um, obviously depending on where that is in your environment. Go into VLAN 20 and we're going to do the same thing. So span 802, uh, span 802 so it's 802-1w is what that stands for. So now if in the show VLAN, it's now going to tell me that spanning tree is on for those VLANs. Okay, so uh, that's the basics to VLANs. Uh, obviously, if you want to route between VLANs, there's another video on that to create a router interface to be able to route between VLANs. Dual mode, if you want to tag and untag on the same time, so for phones or sometimes access points, um, there is a video on that as well in the series. Uh, but that's the basics to how VLANs work. So thanks for joining and see you next time.